to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Friday episode of the Fantasy Footballers, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, Andy Holloway, and a big fat bear. Hey, winter is approaching. Normal-sized grizzly. It's got some uh, some hibernating to do. Got the clown wig on today. Oh, st- still wearing it. Yeah, clown all week. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Al. How are you today, Al? I'm good. Yeah. I've been trying to use that sparingly. My finger, no, you, my finger's uh, always on the button, but <laughs> no, I know it is. I've exercised and restraint. I feel like the people really wanted it and have wanted it, so I I'm, you know, I, I was fine. still scared when it happened. But uh welcome in one and all. We're going to like the idea of a cardboard bear breaking in, taking over the show, yeah. popping, having a graphic <laughs> thing. What? I now you just hit just buttons. for old time's sake. I had to try and, and catch him up. I'm sorry, that. everybody. Okay. But it, well, no, I'm not. I'm not even going to tell my story anymore. Moving on. <laughs> uh, we have a lot to get through today, so uh, you know, let's keep the interruptions down to a minimum. We got a game to talk about last night, and more matchups. We got the parlay parte, which we didn't get to yesterday. We've got fantasy face off. And lots of start-sit decisions to be made. So uh, hopefully we get to the guys you need us to talk about today. If we don't, you can check out the weekly rankings, the start-sit tool. And uh, you can do that at thefantasyfootballers.com. But getting into the game, you know, I'm going to let you kind of have the floor, Mike, because a lot of stuff happened in this game I, I think you wanted to talk about because I saw you talking about it last night in our I don't remember. In what our was company Slack. Uh, maybe it was just you screaming bone zone. Oh, yeah. I did that. Did that several times. It was okay. I think w- what you're referring to is so 49ers 36, Seahawks 24. The Seahawks have now lost three in a row. But Kenneth Walker, Ken Bone Walker, it was disgusting and yet so delicious for fantasy football. And you like, I look at this as. So unbelievably encouraging for Ken Walker. It the was, receptions? Yes. because it, The floor, right? Where olden times, Ken Walker, he would have these games of uh, 14 carries. He only had 32 yards. Like, they, they really couldn't get it going on the ground. They were doing just horrifically stupid play calling. The first and, run, first and 10 Hey, we're gonna run it up the middle, and they like, and they spent the whole week talking about we're gonna establish the run, like, and then the Fort Niners stopped it, and you didn't know what to do. So that part was frustrating. But then, so the the game script gets out of control. What we've seen in the past is, oh well, here comes DJ Dallas or whoever. They're gonna take passing work away. But no, it was Ken Walker, and he got eight dump offs. And just padded his. Is that a career high in receptions? It has to be. Well, I'll, I can we can vet that. But I, it, I think it might be. I mean, it was eight. Is that's so many? But most running backs will never even get close to eight receptions in a oh, PPR league. He scored and caught eight passes. Only thirty-seven yards on the catches. But we're playing the game of how you score points. And if you're in a half or a full point scoring, this was. This was a really, really good fantasy game. My one comment was just going to be around a player that, you know those videos that circle the internet of dads saving their uh, yeah, yeah. their babies the, the or their instincts. kids? Yeah, the dad instincts where like the baby's falling backwards and somehow they throw the pillow under the head or they yeah. catch the kid. I felt like I had a special father catching me at every turn when D cause I'm facing DK Metcalf <laughs> and it was like DK Metcalf had a terrible fantasy day. And this was because a toe missed coming down in the end zone because a illegal shift caused a 52 yard touchdown, not to count. I, 
I, and I, I missed some parts of the game. Like I missed that, yeah. that particular play. That was so frustrating. I had seen your comments about the illegal shift. I had no idea that it directly impacted my fantasy matchup. So that, that so he, call, he was three for 48 on what? 12 targets. That illegal shift call is really chapping my hide, man. This thing is just get out of the way. Get like it's not it's not the first one that's happened. I mean, we've we've had I think there's been a focus by the NFL yes. on calling that ever since the Miami Dolphins started using Tyreek and Waddle in that, you know, forward motion. Yeah, it's I just I hate it and it took away a, a great play that that it had nothing to do with the play. Like DK just finally got open and Geno threw an excellent deep ball. That was just and there was a score and then it was taken away from us. And look, hey DK Metcalf, I'm all about this swag out, get the drip going. Put the put the white cleats on, bro. You gotta have the white toes. Oh, for the they need oh to yeah, match, they yeah. When you match got the when you have bright green cleats and you step out of bounds, it's real easy to see it. Now that's funny. That's funny. Look, he uh, did you see him screaming at Ryan Grubb? I did on the sideline. He he was like he's like get the ball. Throw it past the something sticks. Yes. Yeah. He was he was upset. And, uh, you know, on that side of the football, Kenneth Walker was the story. Lockett got into the end zone. JSN was. There was so many throws into the end zone on low percentage. Like, it was like, okay, uh, right before the half, okay, we're going to throw a, uh, let's throw a fade to DK. Did that didn't work? Hmm. So probably what if we throw a fade to JSN? Okay, no, that didn't work. What if we throw a fade to Tyler Lockett? Oh crap, it didn't. Oh, okay, kick the field goal. Like, yeah, come yeah. on, man. Jordan Mason was injured in this dude, game. and he was cooking. He was nine for seventy three, and got just squashed. So he has an AC joint sprain. They said that he, uh, they held him out. As a precaution. I mean... The, but now we know that he's got he an was, AC joint sprain. You could see it. He was not okay. He tried to come back in and tried to be the hero. He was hurting. And he got a pretty good carry right away in the second half if he didn't see it. And then goes out. And you're just like, this man is in so much pain. And I'm sure at halftime they gave him the special pain goes away uh, medicine. And it was not doing the uh, what it needed to do for him. So this is... We, we, we obviously need more information, and it's not like I don't want to, oh, panic in the streets. But we got the report literally yesterday, Christian McCaffrey's targeting early November. This type of a shoulder injury, often two to three weeks. If Jordan Mason misses two to three weeks, it might be the end of the run. Isaac Garendo on nine carries <laughs> averaged 2.55 a carry, and the the – visual of Isaac, Isaac Garendo running versus Jordan Mason. It was so stark. But then he broke off a 76-yard yep. run and went down on purpose. So this Oh, uh, he got he I mean he got hit. No. Really? He would have broken that that foot tackle easily. He actually went down to end the game. He went down into an intentional slide on that play. I would have to watch it again cuz um, it looked like I watched he, it 10 times. Okay. It was a slide. He he got somebody dove and hit him in the foot, but it would have been he could have run through it. Okay. He just took a he took a slide. Um, trying to end the game there. They ended up scoring. Yeah, on and, then, and, and then use checks like, hey. It's like, this is, uh, yeah, why slide? Th thanks for the touchdown, yeah. Rendo. Next time you have a chance to score. Also, that was awesome. Yeah. Freaking Juice and Kittle. And then they had like the their wives right there on the side. Uh, that was fun. George Kittle, two touchdowns. He's already the, he was already the tight end one of the year. And this is going to further enforce it. Debo had the big play, a 76-yard touchdown. And Brandon Ayuk faded yeah. back into the shadows. Yeah, it was. Nobody knows. I can tell you this from human testimony. Okay. Those that have Brandon Ayuk want to rip every hair out of their own heads yes. because by the time, you know, they it's been a, I bench you and you're good. Like some, people benched him last week for the first time. Sure. They uh, We didn't tell you to do that, but they did because they were frustrated and you have other options and he goes crazy. Then they put him back into the lineup and he disappears. Yeah, the 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 Forty ers were able to run the ball thirty three times. Like this, would, I mean, they would have just drives of because I got high uke too, and I'm like, please throw him the ball, and they just keep running it, running it really successfully. So they were able. That was 
the game plan and looking at the way that the ball was spread around. You know, five targets for Debo. Debo had the 70-yard touchdown, but he had three catches. You know, Ayuk had four targets. Jennings had five targets. So it was more... Only 28 pass attempts, almost half yeah, the amount just, that Geno Smith had. It was just everything was getting spread around and the rushing. So I'm, that's... I'm the, I don't know if that's taken as a like glass half full for the terrible performance of Ayuk or just this this can happen with the 49ers. All right, that's enough of the recap. Let's jump into the news and notes, but first. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday we say thank you to one of the supporters at jointhefoot.com. And give away a $100 gift card to Fantasy Champs where you can grab some trophies. We give away a Fantasy Footballers t-shirt as well. And this week's winner from the Foot Clan, Jason Mormoa. Jason <laughs> That's a great name. Mormoa. <laughs> Spitting image of one another. Well, he is, he's more. Uh, all right. All right. Um, thank you for supporting the show. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Oh, all right. Um, Jason he would have he would have lo loved that joke. He, he would have loved that <laughs> joke um, if he were still with us. <laughs> like today. Yeah. He'll be and back. We, we be waited back all week to let you know. <laughs> he would. No, he'll be back on Monday. Um, <laughs> he would have loved that joke. He would have loved that joke, too. Oh, we'll remember him. Yeah. Um, Anthony Richardson practice in full. Looks like he's going to be back. Jonathan Taylor remains sidelined. It looks like very doubtful. And Trey Sermon's back at practice. So he'll he'll probably get the start. Um, And now, what dun, is dun, going dun, dun, on? Dun, 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 Thankfully, this news dun, 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 broke dun, dun, just right now. This is from Stephen Holder. Uh. Look, we had gotten news that Michael Pittman had a back injury that uh -huh. might put him on injured reserve and could be even worse. Like when this when this news just came this morning, my full expectation of this tweet was that Michael Pittman IR. had been placed on IR. But no, Stephen Holder is reporting he's in uniform. But you got to read it. I have no idea what is happening, but Colts wide receiver Michael Pittman Jr. is in uniform and catching passes in individual drills at today's practice. So individual drills does not mean he is playing, but if you're doing individual drills, I don't think you're going on the IR. So Yeah, so we don't know. Maybe, we don't know more. Maybe the Colts are just so shell shocked from all the injuries we're getting. So when Michael Pittman went into the uh went into the dock, it's like, hey, uh, my back's kinda hurt. They're like, oh, Oh, here we go again. Put He's him like, on no, the no, IR. No, no, doctor, I'm actually fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. Unnecessary. So Michael Pittman, we'll see. Josh Downs is practicing. He's a uh, he's a very interesting play this week. Yep. And yeah, Jonathan Taylor going to be most likely out. I will be with you. Last week it was Jason. Mm -hmm. It's normally Mike, but I'll be with you for Sunday Live this Sunday morning. So I'm really looking forward to reporting on Michael Pittman. He's gonna, he's not going to play. It's going to be a good time. Evan Ingram remained limited on Thursday. He will be a game time decision and for a lot of you it's going to be a risky play so uh brian robinson also a game time decision dealing with the knee injury it's the ravens I'd, and he's been a dmp two straight days he's scary even if he plays in this matchup against the ravens i would really prefer to put someone else in rashad white downgraded to dnp did not practice on Thursday. With a foot injury that is – That's not good. High probability of missing the week. It's pretty rare that you see someone downgraded on a Thursday or a Friday and then they still play. Taysom Hill's sideline for the Saints. Alvin Kamara returned to a limited practice. We said he'd probably miss Wednesdays from here on out. Rashad mm – -hmm. or sorry, Rashid Shahid, not Ahmad Rashad. No, but, no, 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 different no. guy. Different guy. Um – Return to a limited practice, but he's sketchy with uh, Spencer Rattler today, uh, this weekend. Here's some positive news, Mike. Joe Mixon returned to a limited practice on Thursday. All right. So monitor that. Is he right back in your lineup if he's active? Yes. Damian Pierce practiced in full. I uh, ceremoniously 
cut Cam Akers yesterday. Okay. After this practice report, I said, I, there's no world I'm starting you now. You gave him the business. And uh, Joe Mixon, come on back. All right, Ramondre Stevenson did not practice on Thursday, and the, the Patriots are looking to call up another running back, Kevin Harris or someone else. So Stevenson, while head coach Ger Gerard May Mayo said that it's not expected to be long-term, he might miss this week. Mm -hmm. Tucker Craft added to the injury report <coughs> with a groin. Mm. Limited. Should be okay. Well, we'll he's, always, he's always had a groin. Yeah. But this t now it's hurt. I think he'll be okay. Is he on groinindex.com? Uh, I mean, he better be. Yeah. Or that thing's a sham. Oh, look who's there. His quote was, in fact, Ach, my groin. If he wasn't there, I mean, I would be like, why do we this, have those six employees working on that website? This groinindex.com is, is the, the There's most. There's no latency. It is the fastest, most reliable source of groin injuries in the known in universe the no what's amazing and i this is just a rumor so al i don't know if you heard this um sometimes players check it to see if their groins hurt <laughs> it knows before the player occasionally well like minority reports every <laughs> once in a while they go you know what i better check yeah oh it does hurt <laughs> groinindex.com <laughs> <laughs> um Luke Musgrave likely to go on IR. Yeah. So Tucker Craft better be okay. Get that groin healthy. Christian Watson returned to a limited practice. He's working his way back from an ankle injury. Bijan limited with a hamstring. This has been an issue, and maybe to blame for some of the lack of utilization. Could be. So something to monitor. Chase Brown added to the injury report. Man, there's a lot of injury report mm -hmm. news today. This is lame. Quad injury. Zach Moss is already limited. Chase Brown looked like he was going to get the majority of the work, so monitor that one and come talk to me on Sunday. Uh, Malik Neighbors, he has been ruled out with a concussion. It's a bummer. Yeah, it's kind of concerning because this is now, uh, you know, he had the 10 days and now he's going to miss another week. So Darius Slayton, Wandale sure. Robinson. And then uh, James Cook didn't practice on Thursday either. Yeah, so they I'm getting I, worn out with these injury reports, Mike. They uh, they're I believe they're the Monday game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Monday night against the Jets. Yeah, so could be an extra day's rest. Yeah, this is like this is like missing a Wednesday. You know, you just have to push the schedule. But tomorrow will be a big deal if or one when, when the Friday report comes out and James if he's a did not practice Friday then I would really be looking for other options. I, I want to know where he is in points per game at running back right now. James Cook? Uh, tenth. Is that surprising? That it – no. I guess with three minimum games played, he's sixth because uh, there's a couple players that, like, I mean, he slipped in a single performance. Were, oh, were you, do you feel like that's low? Uh, No, sixth is, sixth is about right. Or when you said tenth. Tenth felt low. Okay. okay yeah, okay. yeah. I that's what surprised. He had the me. one bad game. Yep. Any other news, Al? Anybody's groins uh, being reported on right now? Mm, no, nothing. Can new. we get you out into the field and you could do some live uh, practice reporting specific to <laughs> that injury? <laughs> All right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break. We'll get right back into the forecast. And don't forget, we've got the Wheel of Shame coming up. And it's not Jay Chris, and it's not me. So that'll be fun. All right, it's time to get back into our game previews for week number six. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Yesterday, Mike, you and I had the privilege and opportunity to cover a London matchup between the Jags and Bears. Also, the Cardinals, Packers, Colts, Titans, Texans, Patriots, Buccaneers, Saints, Browns, Eagles, Commanders, and the Ravens. Why not kick it off with some just... Just some hit that nasty button, Mike. The Chargers at two and two take on the Denver Broncos, who are three hey, and two. The Broncos are three and two, man. Uh respect. Respect. 
The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Chargers <laughs> minus three on the road. No respect. The over-under is 35 and a half, Mike. So the the, the Broncos are three and two. They're at home, and they are projected to lose? Where's the respect? Not there. Bo Nix engineering a pretty nice performance last week. Javante Williams, Mike, uh, we, a lot of questions about whether he's just a viable every week start right now. His DK rushing line is 45 and a half. It has been. But the Chargers defense is pretty good. They are, but it's been better. The last couple of weeks, uh, there was the, the game against the Jets. He was 16 for 77. I mean, that's 4.8 for Javante. That may as well be 8.0 yards per carry. And I know there was that was a weird game with the rainy and, and really low scoring. But then the next week against the, against the Ravens, 13 for 61. Caught five passes as well in that game against the Raiders. It is quietly things are trending in the right direction is for he, Javante. Is he the only player you'd consider starting in this game? I oh, think he is for me. Yeah, I mean... I, I'm sorry, not in this game. For the, Bron for the Broncos. For the yeah. Broncos in this game. Yeah, I mean, Cortland Sutton, while being the number one guy, it's just 38 yards, 26, 68, 60, with a touchdown, 32. So, it's, it, it's I wouldn't not... Do it. the, the passing offense is not there yet for the Broncos, and he's... If Javante is still a lower, maybe a low end RB two type of a play, but cross your fingers. We expect J.K. Dobbins to be out there. Gus Edwards has missed practice, so Dobbins could be by his lonesome. The Broncos' could defense tenth against the run, giving up eighteen fantasy points a game. Dobbins feels pretty safe. Yeah, obviously the the matchup against the Broncos is brutal, but overall volume and then it's what do they do uh like Hassan Haskins uh is on this roster and then the draft twitter darling Kamani Vidal Sassoon we'll see if mm. he gets see if he actually gets to be active for the game what other decisions are there in this game two great defenses I don't even know which defense I'd rather play uh I'd play I, the, I'd I have the Broncos, Broncos. that's I'd who I Broncos. I'm gonna go with but they're both very good defenses Justin Herbert still recovering from an ankle injury. I don't trust any wide receivers. It, it I don't know if I trust anyone in, but, on the Chargers against the number two pass D. Yeah, it's it, not trusting someone. But if you're in the situation of Lad McConkey is, is fine. Like he has for a for a rookie with with the, the situation he's been dealing with, he's played pretty well. Like two top twenty games out of four already. Uh, the bye week, maybe maybe the rookie gets a little even a little bit more involved here, and it's like the the, the Sertan treatment. If one happens, that would be Quentin Johnston or maybe Josh Palmer. But McConkey is, I think, he, like a, it's a low key, low key. It wouldn't shock me if he has a a fine game here, like fifty and a touchdown. Can we move on? Yes. Do please. I have permission to move on yes. from that game? Let's get to a much higher over under here, Mike. The Pittsburgh Steelers at three and two take on the two and three Las Vegas Raiders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line on the road. Steelers minus three. The over under thirty six point five. I thought we fixed this. I thought you I, can't. I fix. thought Raj and the rules committee we fixed this. No, they need those illegal shifts, Mike. They need people <laughs> running forward like an arena yeah. football. <laughs> we have we have made so many rules to make offense easier. Make it more fun to watch. And then they just do that dumb crap. To be fair, we've had very high-scoring Thursday night football games the last yeah. two weeks, which yeah. is nice. But this game, Aiden O'Connell's getting the star. Justin Fields on the other side. Um, Najee Harris, Alexander Madison. The George Pickens saga continues in this game. Dude, it's not good. It's not good. They it, Look, it, it's weird because... They are hungry for another wideout. Yeah. And I think it it hit us a little bit strangely when they were as aggressive about Brandon Ayuk in the offseason because they just, you know, they, they intentionally got rid of Deontay Johnson, who's a super talented player. And you're like, okay, they're moving forward with Pickens. And, and the sentiment, this is not a number one in their mind. Well, And he hasn't been a number one for fantasy. And he hasn't been, he hasn't been putting up the effort 
that's the issue. Which for, is a problem for the Steelers regularly now at, at wide receiver. For for George Pickens. Claypool. The yeah. Um, Martavis. It's now Pickens. Like P Pickens is there's just there's there's it's not good stuff going on. Like the if when if you go back and watch some of the film, you can you can see plays where I mean he is fully taking the play off and in like for Mike Tomlin, I imagine that's just nails on a chalkboard. Arthur Smith and crew they're asked about what well, you know what why was this the season low snaps for George Pickens and they're like you know we're we're running packages and got to full coach speak and then when Pickens is asked about it he's like it's not my problem they're the ones who are supposed to put me on the field and you're like George man it, like I think that's part of the problem is is that you got the team's got to get together and figure this out of getting of getting people on the same page, and they are not. Brock Bowers is the only super lock of this game. I mean, Najee, you you should play him. I guess. Yeah, he, no, not Najee. He's a lock as well. It, Najee's rushing lines at sixty six and a half, yeah. and there's no like uh, Patterson will be out. Uh, Warren is going to be out yet again. I I hesitate a little bit, but I will. But I'm going to say it anyways. I think Jalen Warren is maybe a sneaky pick up right now not a, I mean you would have to trade for him but you might be able to trade garbage for him just in terms I've, I've cut him in a league yeah it like but yeah, I couldn't afford to have him sitting that's there for, for so yeah long. that's why I'm like I I don't know I don't know about it but it's Najee has been bad on the ground and he's just the only guy who's left like when when Warren was missing a game Cordero Patterson looked great and then he goes out of the game and then Najee is terrible it's like okay well clearly it's not just the defense is able to stop the running backs of the of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So just saying of the if Warren can actually be healthy, this seems like the most uh this will be the highest opportunity for him to actually steal the job. But again, he's he's been so hurt with this. I mean, hamstring. you could you could easily have a Steelers team that's running Russell Wilson at quarterback with Devontae Adams on the roster and Jalen Warren back in the back. Like, you could have three positional changes in three weeks. I mean, we, we could. It could be a lot of turnover, especially if they lose a third straight game here. Uh, they are favored. The Raiders at wide receiver, Devontae Adams is still chilling. He's not playing in this game. And now Jacoby Myers did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. Last man up right now is Goodness. Trey Tucker and then, of course, Brock Bowers. But, well, hold on. The, uh, I mean, what are you looking up? I can't. I, I have the, their slot player. I can't remember his. Name right? Oh, DJ Turner. DJ Turner. I'm the <laughs> that. Yeah, you that's want, a new level of nasty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll just say DFS only. But the Steelers get they the Steelers allow slot wide receivers to have good performances against them. And if Jacoby's really out, if DJ Turner, it's going to be really gross. Yeah. Yeah. I um. Yeah, kinda, let's let's get surprised. out of here. Bail out. Um, okay. Can we get a game with like more than 30 points scored? Yes. Yes, we can. Detroit three and one taking on the three and two Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. The DK sportsbook line here. Lions minus three on the road. All three of the games we've previewed so far, the road team, three point favorites, but this game has an over under 52 points. So are you excited? Can we get a key on the building? I don't have that button. Um, thank you. Thank yes, you. Are we going to get, are we going to, is this going to deliver, Mike? That is the question I have for you. I think so. I think so too. I, I think so too. I think this is going to be a very exciting ball game. I, yeah, I, I think so. Like we got, and you got some goodness on here. Like CD Lamb, of course. Tolbert is my start of the week. I think that he is a a sneaky good play. And Jake Ferguson, his DK reception line is at five and a half. I mean, Ferguson and. Ferg looks like Ferguson Kittle Bowers right now, and I guess we could put Kelsey in there. So, hey, our pie's growing a little bit. Uh, you didn't even add McBride. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Trey McBride. Got, mean, we got infinite tight ends. We got Najoku coming back, Ingram coming back. We got tight ends for days, Yeah, we're gonna, it's it's going to be totally fixed, everybody. Don't worry about <laughs> it at all. <laughs> uh, so, the, yeah, the I guess really the only discussion on the Cowboys side, it's Rico Dowdle, and you know I'm the Rico Dowdle guy. I think he's going to have a bad game unless he catches five passes, which is possible uh, for the way that they have been utilizing him. As, But on the ground, it's going to be absolutely 
brutal against the Lions. So Rico Dowdle is a, a lower tiered option for me this week. The Lions are fifth against fantasy running backs right now. Uh, are we going to get the game we've been wanting from CeeDee Lamb? We talked about the fact that he was the wide receiver 20 at this point last year, went on the, the dynamic run that won championships. Is it time? It, we've had big time performances be. from Godwin, Cup, JSN in the slot against Detroit, and that's where CD lines up all the time. Yeah, I I do think that we have a we have a very strong chance of getting it, getting the bada boom. And we like Jalen Tolbert. Yep. So we like we like the Cowboys. Yeah, I mean we'd like almost literally almost everybody in this game except for Dowdle. Goff, Gibbs, Montgomery, Amon yep. Ra, Laporta, and yep. then Jamison Williams. Yep. This game is great. It is. Just Incre deliver. Some numbers for you on the defensive side. The, the Lions have been good against the run, obviously. So, um, like you said, that's the one sketchy play. There was a report that came out this morning that was unbelievable. Zeke has been dumbfounded by his <laughs> lack, lack of opportunities in the offense, which, look, I, I'm i willing to take the L if Dowdle ends up performing for more than a week. You know what I mean? It's Over been two weeks. I'm not counting one screen pass touchdown. That was what he did the previous week. Yeah, yeah. But, I, and like I said, if if Dowdle's a thing, I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. I'd love to have the clarity. I if Zeke, if you if you if he's done, if he's gone, that's fine. But on film, last year, Zeke looked better than Dowdle to me. Okay. This year, not the, necessarily the case, but I don't think that there's a huge disparity. Genuinely, I don't. I think if you gave every carry you gave Dowdle last week to Zeke, which they haven't been doing, they haven't been giving him a work. I think you get a similar result. But a report came out today that Zeke says he's dumbfounded about the lack of touches. And Jerry Jones came out and said, quote, we're saving him. <laughs> <laughs> for what, Jerry? What are you saving him for? For the run, man. For the big run. <laughs> for the big. And I do mean the run. They're saving him for like, one big run. Like the... The audacity of that statement of like, yeah, we're good. Hey, we're just, we're getting Rico Dow to warmed up who look from 40% of the attempts to the sixties. This to, is not a joke. To 71%. I know it's not. No, I know. But, it's I, just... but I'm saying to, to be working a young player, relatively speaking, Dowdle's kind of old. He's for, he's 26 for a guy getting his first shot. But to be like, Hey, this we're, we're working on him in the offense. To, to get the team to jive together, to get a, a winning team, and then when it comes time to – when it's crunch time, then we're just going to put in a brand-new player who's really old and real dusty. Can I read the and full that's, – that's the situation. Let me read the full quote. Please just do. Just so you have, you know, the context. Um, because he responded to the, the claim that Zeke was dumbfounded. And he said dumbfounded is a miscarriage. Uh, a mischaracterization and a bad description of how he feels about things. Quote, we're saving him, and we should be. Rico is an outstanding running back. He's always had the challenge uh, because of his size of doing his blocking and protecting the quarterback. But his big problem has been what? He has had injuries over yeah, the course been, of Dattle's his career. So it would be madness to depend on that. Zeke is out there, and we want to protect him over this particular period of time. Okay. I, I mean, I don't think that's how we're saving him, and we should be. That's not, so. There you go. This is like it's like the Mighty Ducks too, switching goalies right at the very end. Yeah, but that was a movie, a fake movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, they'll make a movie about Jerry. <laughs> yeah, probably. But yeah, I don't, hey, Lions. Yep. the The answer about the Detroit Lions is, yeah, yeah. Yep. Atlanta three and two, Carolina one and four. The games in Carolina. The Falcons are six point road favorites. Is this every road team so far a favorite? Um, DraftKings Sportsbook line has Falcons minus six. We the over sure under is forty seven. Yeah, that that's four straight. Uh, I got a spoiler for you, man. It doesn't stop. Are we sure about this? Brooks, I need well, look, you. Look, Brooks, Brooks, go double check everything. Let's keep this <laughs> double check double everything check we got. Everything. With Michael Pittman's <laughs> fine and Zeke's being held out for the big He's run. The One big run. All right. Falcons, Panthers in Carolina. Falcons minus six over under 47. Start of the week, Kirk Cousins in this game. DK passing line. 
251. So we're expecting big things from London and Mooney? Yeah. <clears throat> or we should be. And Pitts? Uh, I'm not counting on it, but he should be okay in this game. Yeah. I mean, the 7 for 88, again, it was what Kirk Cousins had 500 plus yards. So it's, you can't just look at the raw production that Pitts had. It was only a 13.6% target share for Kyle Pitts, and that is. Like I get, uh, if for a tight end start, it's okay, but like that's not a oh we we are so back. So, London and Mooney are both locks. They they are watch Mooney. He's been limited all week. Oh, with, I'm watching with a knee injury. It's limited, so I would assume he plays. And if he plays, I'm I'm, I'm okay starting him in this. He game. was last week's wide receiver three. Nice nine for one hundred five and two. Bijan. You might need to – like, this should be a smash situation. Carolina yes. is atrocious against the run and everything else. Bijan should be awesome, but this could also be a game. I really think that Tyler Algier gets more work than you like. Bijan's hamstring, they take care of it. I mean, his snap count went from 82% for the first three weeks to 66% the last two weeks. Opportunities per game went down 7 so they could be managing a hamstring injury yeah, here. I, and Algier should be able to run all over Carolina. Yeah. As a like as a, a a Hail Mary pivot at the running back position, I think Algier's it's okay. On the other side of the football, Chuba Hubbard has been amazing. Not a great matchup for him, but they're gonna lean on him in this one. Deontay Johnson, I go right back to him after the disappointment last week. And that's it. On the Carolina side, that's, those are the only two guys, Hubbard and Deontay, that I want to mess with. I don't want to take another chance with Xavier Leggett this week. Um, I, I don't think it's that complicated on the Carolina side of the football. Yeah, I don't disagree. If you had Mooney, you had Deontay Johnson. How would you make that decision? Ooh, that is tough because they're both limited from practice. I, I think I'd probably go Mooney. I think I'm going to go Mooney there. That one's really close. Sunday night football, the Bengals take on the New York Giants in New York and the Bengals. DK Sportsbook line, Bengals minus four. The over-under is 47. Road Warriors this week. Apparently. That's Just, like, that is, when we, so we, in the, in the office, we do a pool, you know, of, you go, go pick. Yeah, the weekly just, picks. Just weekly picks. Go pick against the spread. You know, just have a good time. And whenever I'm done and I'm heavy on the road favorites, I go, oh, this is going to end poorly. 100%. 100%. Uh, this week, though, they are the heavy favorites. Just got word that Zach Moss and Chase Brown will both play in this game. Okay. The Giants' defense is not a pushover. This is a good defense. This is a top-half defense. And they've had some surprising performances. I mean, they just knocked off and slowed down the Seattle offense last week. Right? So, does that impact anything? Probably not. No. Because it might impact whether you feel confident with two semi-injured running backs because the Giants are uh, 11th in the league against opposing fantasy running backs. They only give up 18 points a game. You spread that out across Moss and Brown, that's a little bit of a low upside situation. Sure, it, yeah, if it, if it gets fully cut in half and given to both of them, but they're both in play of uh, Zach Moss – the, just the slight higher probability at the better game. But Chase Brown has really been – He's looked explosive. He, 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 he looks fantastic, and the opportunities are going they're, – they're building. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, please start them. Yep. Um, Jamar Chase was Mike's fantasy draft redo number one overall pick on Wednesday. Um, I think Higgins' receiving line is like 54 and a half yards in this game. So, and the 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 hilarity is not lost on me of Jamar Chase the the first couple weeks of the season, right? I mean, look, there's other factors, of course. Joe Burrow's just returning from the injury, but nine point two points, five and a half points. T. Higgins comes back, twenty six point eight, sixteen, thirty six. Like it matters. I mean, we all want our number one guy to be the only player on the team because we want all the targets. Doesn't work that way. Sometimes 
when you have a really good player on the other side, now now your number one has an even better opportunity. Yeah, I think we've seen that at times in Philadelphia with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith when they're both healthy. Right. On the other side of the football, we've got no Malik neighbors. The Giants are battling. They're at home. How do we feel about Wandale and Darius Slayton? Last week, Darius Slayton was the beneficiary of no neighbors. 11 targets, 8 for 122 and a touchdown. What I love about Slayton when he gets opportunities is that they take deep shots to him. And Daniel Jones and Darius Slayton have connected on those in the past. So Slayton or, you know, Deontay. Oh, Deontay. So it, he's not entering that tier. No, but he's fine to me as as like a flex or a double flex if if you're like, I gotta put I gotta put some volatility. I gotta get some Trey nitro. Tucker, who seems to be by himself in Las Vegas. I would go Slayton. Okay, so that 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 answers that question. Devin Singletary has been limited. He's on the Groin Index uh, website. The 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 decision on the Giants running backs I think is close to impossible because look, Devin Singletary is a good player. He is recovering from the injury, but to have a rookie running back go out and do what Tracy did last week. I don't – and the health status of Singletary, I don't think you just like, okay, Devin, you're back. You're the guy again. Like, So what does that split turn out to be? Nasty. It's really sketchy to start either of them. But I, It's more like just watch this week yeah. and see what's going on. I mean, if you're in a tough situation and you have to start one of them, I probably am going back to the starter if yes. he's out there. If, the, if they're both on my team – and they're both playing, I'd, I would play Devin. Did you know Daniel Jones has had three quarterback one weeks over the last four? He has been playing okay. Which you, is can't, you can't compliment super... him or it will, everything will fall apart. Yeah, Derek Carr style? Yes. Um, one Monday night football game. Can you believe it? And surprise, surprise, road favorite. The Buffalo Bills 3-2 <laughs> and two, taking on the 2-3 and three New York Jets. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Bills minus 2.5. The over-under is 41. I actually think the Jets win this ball game. So I guess Ooh, I'll hit another okay. one. Andy's almost upset of the week. The passing line for Josh Allen right now is 210. We talked about this last week. He had been red light, green light. He had been good, bad, good, bad. Now it's two straight bad games in a row, 28th and 20th. At the position. Nine for 30 throwing the football last week. Khalil Shakir, I don't think he's playing in this ballgame. Did not practice on Thursday. Curtis Samuel, limited, toe injury, what he's been dealing with, that's a problem. Keon Coleman is not a target vacuum. Remember Allen Robinson in Jacksonville was the target monster? Yes. Keon Coleman is not that. Keon Coleman is a physical receiver who can make a play or two for you, but he cannot go catch you know he's not what Garrett Wilson did last week for these right. Jets um so I I feel nervous about this and Kincaid is not the way either Just the way the, they the overall for Buffalo I feel nervous overall for Buffalo this is a great defense they're playing they're also getting the uh they've got the head coach yeah. changeover the, the coach bump narrative I mean this is the number one team against quarterbacks in football and Josh Allen's coming off of two bad weeks I, if there was ever a time in the last five years you could think about pivoting to a higher upside play than Josh <laughs> Allen, this like if you had Baker Mayfield and Josh Allen, well, Laser Mayfield, yeah, sorry, I mean, and that, <laughs> thank you. I just the lows for Josh Allen. I said this exactly last week. The lows are low now. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, the the floor seems to have fallen into the basement. Like, if he has a, a, a dud this week, and it's three straight games outside the top 20 at the position. Yeah, I think there is there is a chance that that could happen. You have to be able to, to, to grab the brush and paint the picture of what a good game looks like fantasy-wise for Allen. And I don't think you can do it in the passing game right now. So then you have to just tell me, oh, cool, he runs for 57 yards and two touchdowns. That can always happen. But the Jets are not giving up points no. on the ground, through the air, anywhere. And with, I mean, with Shakir out, and if James Cook is out, oh to, gosh, to me, like, I I know people love Don Kincaid. To me, that's their top two options. That's their top two weapons. And so, I mean, that that's some fantasy algebra that usually ends in disaster. That's, this is why I'm I'm actually surprised they're favored in this game. 
Yeah, maybe that maybe DK's not taking into account the coach bump. I love Brees Hall. I love Garrett Wilson. I'm okay flexing Alan Lazard. And I look in this economy, Tyler oh. Conklin's not a bad idea. Always. Always, conk, always be conking. Conk. Always be conking. That is, you've said that for most yeah, of your life. Yeah, yeah, no, ABC. Always be conking. Always be conking. He said that. He said that, Al. <laughs> I heard it. A lot yeah. of people think it's closing, but it's actually, it's, no, it's, it's conking. conking. It's conking. You, we've been saying oh, it wrong. Oh, is it with a G? I thought it was just a, a conking with an N apostrophe. Conking? I thought it was conking. Or C O N K I N. I think that apostrophe. that's just that's what what part of the of the nation are you from? Oh, okay. I guess is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends. It, Local dialect can change. It's like that. the pop and coke. And, uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so depending on where you are, um, <laughs> always be conking ABC. <laughs> uh, this. I mean, Dalton Kincaid is in. I mean, you yeah, you, you just play yes. him and hope that it goes the right direction. Yeah, look, five targets in three straight games. That's what is he we'll on the that. year? Do we have that number? Yeah, we do. That would be he would be the tight end twelve. Yeah, that's disappointing. That's disappointing. He's had a, a one top ten week, and yeah, I mean he's on pace for eighty one targets. I think we had him projected in the draft kit for one oh five, one oh six. Yeah, it was it was the 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 projective projecting like he will be the number one target, and it's it. not. It's not like Dawson Knox is taking opportunity, just to be clear. Dawson Knox has five targets on the season. <laughs> I didn't so, realize it was that so low. So it's just been like they can't connect. They better draw up a Dalton Kincaid game plan this week. Otherwise, we're in big, big trouble. Uh, Mixon is at practice today. Okay. That's an injury update for you. We don't know if it's limited or full. So I'm going to say a little prayer that it's full. I need him back. A lot of people do. And you said he'd be right back in your lineup, he, right? he would for me, yeah. All right, we missed the parlay parte from oh. yesterday. So King of the castle. Um, King of the castle, baby. Unfortunately, the eight. For now. For now. The eight targets. Hey. The eight targets from uh, Zach Ertz did not lead to that's what we so, needed. That's so insane. Eight targets, <laughs> 10 <laughs> yards. If you're like, hey, Zach Ertz needs, what did he need, 20 25. 25. Uh, 25. I promise he will have eight targets. You You're go, like, it's done. I'm going right to the bank. So Mike is the crown. He was uh, he was dead on. Joe Burrow had, I think the, the line was 250, and you had him at over 250, and he yep. went 392. Yep. And then Jason lost on the anytime touchdown last week by Jordan Mason. So this week, here we go. We got Jason's pick. So we'll start there. He's going under bunch of haters this week under on Ju on Justin Herbert's 195 and a half passing yards against the Broncos that is a low bar 195 and a half is low but he's not gone over one time this year and now he's playing Denver yeah exactly so they they, they just don't throw the football a lot they just don't I'm going under as well I'm taking Trevor Lawrence under 245 and a half which is an alt line Chicago's giving up 174 passing yards per game so I like this I like I like yeah. Lawrence being under in this one. I don't mind that one. I had I had strongly considered that before we started talking. You're like, oh, I think I'm going to go in this game. I'm going to go Calvin Ridley. I'll be the only non-hater over here. Calvin Ridley over 40 receiving yards. The Colts have allowed the fifth most yards to wide receivers, second highest yards per target, and they're getting crushed by perimeter wide receivers. The huge George Pickens game, Brian Thomas, I'll say Nico. He doesn't really count because he's just so good. But Roma Dunes, a huge game. Romeo Dobbs, 62 yards with Malik Willis. I think this is, and and all the chatter, of course, the narrative of we're going to get Calvin Ridley on board. All right. Um, so you go Calvin Ridley, 40-plus receiving yards. Now, during the sharing of this parlay parte, there was a, a, a nice one-liner that came in from the Falcons. What's that? This parlay is so good, we have to hide it from Calvin Ridley. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back with the Fantasy Face-Off. And now I go from crown to clown. Yeah, yeah, it's your turn, Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How'd you all feel when Nico was... Went uh, out early? No, but no, didn't go out. Hit the 70-yard or whatever yeah, touchdown. I thought, I thought you were set up for success. <laughs> 
Last week, Jason and I, uh, Jason was number one. I was number two. We were two points apart. And then Mike, the stinky Mike. Yeah. Down at the bottom. We were on our way. So uh, I'm keeping my uh, no wheel of shame streak alive through four different weeks. And I'm going to You better be on Kyler and Marv again, you coward. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. But first, uh, you get to spin this wheel. Wheel of shame. All right. Spin the stupid wheel. Oh, man. Spin it. Is that becoming my favorite Star segment? Starman. Uh, Pizza Face. The Clark. Rainy Day. Oh, Bad Bull. Bad Bull. Oh, my bull. gosh. Am I have a, do I have a potty on my head? Oh, boy. Is Around this, the neck, Mike. Is this sanitary? Um, This better be new or at least cleaned. We took that from it the was, uh, back bathroom. You never want the Falcon handing you a toilet. You know what I mean? I don't want this thing slamming on my head. What is? Oh th yeah. Oh, and a, is this uh, a plunger? You got a hat? plunger. This is a. This is great. <laughs> oh, that's a plunger hat. <laughs> oh yeah. I look like this I'm is, in. Uh, I'm in uh, Devo. This is great, dude. You must whip it. This when is great. Baby comes along. <laughs> you must whip it. All right, Mike. You got me. Oh, we're gonna whip it into shape. Uh, you got me. My quarterback, Kyler Murray. <laughs> Good for you. Kyler Good Murray for against you. Green Bay. I am not abandoning my secret hey, if sauce. if it's working. Four straight weeks of avoiding the toilet around my neck. This is a good one, dude. This one's good. <laughs> Go to YouTube. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Uh, I've got uh, – you asked, is this the week that it, it works? I've got Dak Prescott in against the Detroit Lions. Really? 6,700. We got Jason's lineup, too. He's going Kirk Cousins. Okay. I'm going okay. Kirk Cousins. All right. My running backs, Mike, one of them's your start of the week. I'm going Tony Pollard at okay. 6,000. And then I am – I'm shopping near the basement on this player. I'm actually going Tyler Algier. Nice. 5,100, yeah. Atlanta, Carolina. You can run on him. He's going to get work, and Bijan's hurt. So I'm going Tyler Algier and saving some money. Of course, I have Tony Pollard in my lineup. I thought so. And then I'm going with Nasty Najee. Yeah. Nasty Najee Harris against the Raiders. Only 5,800, but he will be alone. He should touch the ball 15-plus times. Now, our, uh, our crack staff here didn't put in the prices for Jason's lineup, but Derrick Henry and David Montgomery are his two wow. starters. Wow. Okay. Derrick Henry, David Montgomery. Where's the bargains? Well, we're going to have to find yeah. them for Jason. Uh, my wide receiver room, two Cowboys, one Brown. C.D. Lamb at 8,600, the okay. highest, most expensive receiver. Amari Cooper, my start of the week for the Browns, target monster, and Jalen Tolbert. I'm playing uh, the what's combination 5,000. Ah, uh, yeah, that's, so that's he's cheap. Yeah, that's nice there. I got CeeDee Lamb, of course, because I got Dak. Uh, then I have Amon Ra St. Brown at 8,100. So we are spending that cash, I ladies I never and like it when my opponent has Amon Ra. That's scary. And then uh, I mean, he's got the Q tag, but I think he's going to play. I got Darnell Mooney in at 5,300. Okay, and Jason went with Deontay Johnson for Carolina. This toilet toy, seat. Is it, it comfortable? While, while it looks luxurious, it's really hmm. awkward and uncomfortable and heavy. Uh, it's it not bothering me at all. You That might surprise you. Yeah, no, it does. It does. Uh, Deontay Johnson, Drake London, Jalen Polk. Those are the three names Jason Wait, threw out there. what? Read those again. Deontay Johnson. Okay. Drake London, Jalen okay, Polk. Okay, so Polk is where he saved the, the, the money then. Uh, okay. He might have. I don't know. I don't know what the prices are. <laughs> I can find that one for uh, you. Polk is 3600 All right, Mike. Yeah, that's the, the Polk, that's a, that's a great punt play. Okay. Yeah, I almost went um, – Demario Douglas oh, with the okay. Drake May uh, situation. But my last three players, uh, you noticed I didn't say Marvin Harrison's name? Yeah. It's because my stack this week is Trey McBride. Oh, very nice. Trey McBride at 5,700. I am saving some cash. I'm going Trey Tucker at 4,200 in my flex, who is all alone in Las Vegas, and they do have to have the ball at, at some points in this game. Yeah. For four downs at a time. And uh, unfortunately, that also means I am – I'm going with my almost upset defense. I'm taking New England at home against Houston without Nico. They're 2,400. They're the cheapest defense on DraftKings. That's who I'm going with. 
I've got the the route king. I'm going with Cade Auten against the Saints, 3,500. The the Buccaneers against uh, Spencer Rattler. Can I interest you in a snake, please? Uh, I don't I don't know where All the right, drop well, someone is. Find that. I got a snake, man. And then here's where I had to save the cash. Xavier Hutchinson of the Houston Texans against the Patriots, 3,300. Jason went Tucker Craft at tight end and Dontavian Wicks in the flex. Oh, okay. So a couple of starts against Arizona for Green Bay, and then he went Titans defense this week. So um, that's a good lineup. There you go. All right, that was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get 200 bonus bets instantly. Download the Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Can we get a little solo shot of Mike, the fantasy hitman? Oh, man, you look real dumb. And there's another name I might call you, but it's not safe for this show. So, um, I'm sorry. You know. I'm sorry to my family. Yeah, you got a toilet seat around your neck because you, you, <laughs> you picked a bad lineup. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and 467 369 In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.